Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the heater control valve on this 240 Volvo. I believe this is a 86 model. The most common thing that these heater control valves do is leak. Occasionally they blow out and you lose control. They seep internally but most of the time they leak. Someone told me that you could no longer get the original style heater control valve for these 240s. So I decided to check around a little bit and I found the original style on Swedish car parts website. So you have a choice to either get one of their heater control valves or get one of these new style heater control valves and do this modification. If you don't want to do the modification, get the valve from Swedish Car Parts. Aftermarket part that we have, it's a MTC and you just have to do some minor modifications to get this new one to work. The owner bought this kit from IPD MTC company makes it it comes with this bracket uh, some kind of thing there a couple of hoses a new valve some clips a screw some insulation and this cable here so we're going to use the instructions that come from where he got it IPD if you get some bad looking instructions like this you can go to IPD's website nine times out of ten and find clear PDF versions of these instructions so I've got those pulled up on my phone and we're going to use these to go ahead and get this conversion done first thing you want to do is open the hood pull that plunger there hold it for two three seconds make sure the hood releases come out here and lift the hood up put your fingers under here and you can feel the tab right right here lift that up lift the hood up you're moving this tab right here kind of a paddle you want the car to be cool so that it's not having hot cooling in here and pressure build up in the system you could open this up just to make sure there's no pressure there close it back next thing you want to do is put hose pinchers on the heater hoses these two hoses right here behind your transmission and oil dipstick yellow ones transmission red ones engine and those two hoses right there are your heater hoses you want to pinch those off to prevent coolant from running in there when you disconnect the valve from the inside this will make less coolant run into the car so I'm gonna get some hose pinched and clamp those off. I got the hoses pinched off. Next thing you want to do is take these two fasteners loose to get this side panel off of here. Then take this fasteners loose to get this material from under here. I think it also has a couple of fasteners down there on the floor. Peel this back and then you should take and peel the carpet back a little bit out of your way so that you can have full access to this stuff here. Do, 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 do. Let me get this out of the way with two hands a little bit. Because that's your heater control valve there. Old school style. Any stuff you see down here in this floor like this, you want to go ahead and vacuum that stuff out. I'm going to go ahead and remove this all-weather floor mat just to give my carpet a little bit more flexibility to come out down here. So now... I see my heater hose connections to this old heater control valve. I'm going to put a trash bag under here to try to catch most of the coolant that I'm going to spill. Then I'm going to take that clamp loose there, that clamp loose there, and pull those hoses off of this heater control valve, catching any of the liquid in a trash bag. You also want some rags available. If some spill, you can mop it up clean it up with the rags. Let me go ahead and disconnect both of these hoses and pull them off this valve. I got those hose clamps loose. Next I'm going to undo this cable. So I'm going to take this screw loose here 
and I'm gonna take this screw loose here so I can get this cable out from this control valve. I'm gonna take that screw out of that bracket right there. Now that I have the valve down away from the chamber, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug those hoses, catching any coolant that spills. I'm also gonna pull this out of this box and then cover that hole with tape or something. I don't think you no longer need that piece of the heater control valve with the new valve. The instructions recommended putting a hose clamp on that hose as well. Do it. That thing seems to never stop leaking in here. And that thing is still leaking coolant. It's never ending. I'm going to tell you, I got at least half a gallon in here and it's still coming. I got this pulled out, this old heater control valve. I'm going to put this plug back in there. To plug that, they say you can tape that hole. And I pulled this out of there too. And it broke coming out. I'm going to use this to plug the heater box there. And that coolant is still coming out of there. I don't know if that thing was near finished yet. But I finally found something to plug the hole with. Stop it. I'm going to carefully pull this out. Pour it in the little tank I have. Let me get some paper towels and get all this cooling up that spill. But it looks like my little plug stopped it for now. Next I'm going to remove that clip down there, that screw up there, that side panel, so I can get this front piece that has these buttons on it. To get this bracket out from up there, man, you gotta pull real hard because that little clip kind of latches on it. You pull hard enough, it'll pop out. Took me some hard pulling. Next, I'm gonna remove the old control cable, and it is through a clip here. I don't know, I don't have this out of the way too far, but there's a clip in here that releases this cable. So, I'm gonna go ahead. That's the clip, release the cable. I'm gonna unhook this cable from this control there. It's gonna take two hands. This next step I've been totally confused on, but I think what they're telling me to do is take this bracket here and bend this so that it's straight. It's not flat this way, it's flat this way. And route the cable through that hole, over that bellow, and up to the connector for the controller. Now that I have this brace bent, I'm going to run the cable through this top hole over through this radio stuff and try to get it hooked back up to the control lever there. So let's run this through there and get that hooked up. You got to be gentle with that thing so you don't break it. If you break it, you're on your own. Somehow passing this up through the hole landed that cable right there by that connecting arm. So I'm going to get that in the connecting arm and get it clipped down the way it's supposed to be so that I can get some control on it. So that's the tip of the cable. I'm going to put it in the connecting arm for the slide. Securing this cable up here where it goes in that bracket. This new bracket from IPD doesn't fit. I can't get it on. When I get this one on, it's a little loose. I tried to stake that hole a little more. Hopefully that'll grab it better. If that doesn't grab it better, I'm going to zip tie it to the bottom of this radio box. Seems to be holding better now when I slide the lever all the way to cold and go to hot. It doesn't move. You don't want that cable moving up in there. You want it to stay where it is. So staking it helped it. So you could look in there. It's closed at cold. And when you go to hot, it opens up, let's cool it through. Cold, hot. Let me go ahead and hook this part of it up. Next, I screwed the hose bracket onto the bracket. I couldn't get the screw that they provided to start cutting into the metal, so I used one of the ones that I already had. I used for supporting 850 dashes, so I got a screw in there. Now I'm going to put this foam in here and I'm going to position this thing up in here so that it'll be in place and I'm going to hook that hose up and hook the other hose up on the other side. They got a new hose they provided for the top side. 
put the foam in there like that. Now I'm going to hook that heater hose up there. Remember, you got to be gentle with that thing so you don't break it. If you break it, well, you're on your own. So I'm going to slide this clamp over that hose. Oh, there's already one on there. I'm going to hook that hose up to that heater valve. Now that I got the hose connected on the back side of that, I'm going to put the bracket on there and put this in the bracket and then put the front hose on and it should hold it in place. I had to clip this around that hose. I might have to reach that from the other side. So I'm going to slide this in there and then I'm going to put a clip on the front of it they gave to lock it in place. You find that clip. I don't quite understand how they expect you to get that hose clip on the back. It's in position. Couldn't really get it to stay snapped. When I snapped it, pushed it back there, it came loose. I slid this bracket in and I slid that tab on there to hold it in place. Now I'm going to put this hose on here from up top there to here. And they also say you should bend this back. So I'm going to bend this bracket back in the position was not fun getting that hose off the top because you gotta have channel locks to break it loose then wiggle it off. This hose don't quite mold perfectly but I'm gonna put it on like this and hook it up to that valve. Have a slight bend in it so this short snake end is going to be on there so let me get a clamp on it and get it routed up there and pushed on and get some progress going on this thing. And this is it. I got it on there. The hose is on there. Everything's on and you can see the heat valve move from hot to cold. Hot, cold. Hot, cold. Should be good to go. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.